In this video, we're veering off the beaten track. This spot that sells these is incredibly famous. It is a confectionery shop that's been around since 1871. Japan is open, we are back in Tokyo. Woo! We're gonna be making a bunch of food videos and we could not be more excited about it. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry, let's eat. <laughs> Today we're filming in Asakusa, probably best known for Sensoji Temple, a Buddhist temple and it's also the oldest temple in Tokyo. So tons of people come to Asakusa to visit Sensoji and they also come to try a ton of traditional uh, snacks or treats uh, in the strip leading up to the temple. This is Nakamise Shopping Street. You can find a load of traditional snacks on the street, but there have been tons of videos filmed on here, great videos about what to eat along the strip. So in this video, we're veering off the beaten track. We're heading into the surrounding areas of Asakusa, the laneways, the little streets. We're heading that way. Let's get into it. It's well worth exploring beyond the main strip when you're here. There's a lot going on, lots of little side streets, lots to see, lots to eat. We're at our first stop. Our first snack is kare pan or curry bread. This is one of my favorite things to eat here in Japan. Let's go and order. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Kare pan, oh, hitotsu, onegaishimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Mmm. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> Ooh, got the goods. They're very strict in Asakusa about not walking and eating. Well, in Japan, it's considered disrespectful to walk and eat at the same time. But here, there are certain places where you can't eat and stand. So please don't eat here. No food or drinks. No food or drinks. Please don't eat here. So let's go and find a spot where we can eat. I have a curry pan in my hot little hand. So this is a beef curry. In a, in a sort of a bread pocket, panko crumb, deep fried. Look at these bubbles all over it from being in the hot oil. Smells delicious. And we found a little spot where you're allowed to eat. So it's signs everywhere to say you can't eat, but they do have designated little spots where you're allowed to chow down. Whoa. Oh my God. Mmm. This spot that sells these is incredibly famous for them. And I know why. It's a light pocket of, of poof when you first eat it. So I bit into that and all I got was curry steam, essentially just shot into my mouth and it, whoa, what a sensation because it filled my sinuses basically, it's delicious. It's full of a, a very finely sort of basically minced beef curry, a few peas in there. Oh, subtle curry taste. Got the deep fried flavors. Oh my God. That is delicious. Mm. Oh, what a way to start the day. Yum. By not exploring far off that main strip, the one we all know and love right up to the temple, you get into this type of area. So very Japanese for lack of a better way to... <laughs> traditional. It's traditional. got like this old world yeah, Tokyo feel. Feels like an old neighborhood. Heaps going on. Heaps to look at. We're off to our next stop. This whole video, in fact this whole series, is going to focus more on the street food side of, of Tokyo's cause, like food. Scene. Scene. Yeah. And we're very excited to be getting right in there. So we're going to do a bunch of videos. Let's go eat some more, huh? This is Momotaro. It is a confectionery shop that's been around since 1871. And we're here to try their dango, which is a uh, rice dumpling snack. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Uh, 
団子を一つお願いします。焼き団子ですか。はい。ありがとう。Uh, so I've just ordered a yaki dango. So, dango is the rice dumpling and it's just been cooked over a hot grill, normally over charcoal. So, let's get into it. There's also a ton of different、um, sweets, so mochi and all sorts, but let's go for the savory treat. It smells really fragrant. So, rice dumpling brushed with soy while it's been cooking on the grill. Mmm. Mmm. Super sticky, chewy. It's made up of a couple of different rice flours, including glutinous rice flour. So, you've got that really stretchy, sticky texture. Mmm. You can taste that smoky flavour from the grill and the soy. Which has been brushed over the top is sort of just enough flavour. It's not too salty. Mmm. Great snack. That was <laughs> delicious. And I do love how, in such an unassuming place, it can give you so much history. 1871, super accessible, not an expensive snack to buy, absolutely delicious, so much history. Yum. Now we're off for more. We're standing in line waiting for this restaurant to open in about half an hour. This restaurant is the oldest onigiri restaurant in Tokyo. It's been around since 1954. Onigiri is the, the wee rice triangles, often wrapped in dried seaweed. We generally have them for breakfast every day when we're here in Japan, just from the convenience store. So I'm looking forward to trying a proper. Super old school restaurant to have these where they are meant to be incredible. It's such a beautiful environment. The onigiri master is behind the counter there and he's got all of the seasonal ingredients used for the filling of the onigiri lined up in front of him. So there is an English menu.、Um, we've chosen、um, a set which comes with two onigiri, miso, and pickles. Look at this beautiful presentation. So, you've got this triangular bowl of rice,、uh, got a seaweed wrap. We went for shrimp,、uh, miso ginger, ginger and a plum vinegar, and also a shiitake and、uh, seaweed filling. And then we've got the pickles on the side and a beautiful miso soup, which has got some、uh, soft tofu in it as well. The rice is warm. Mmm. The seaweed has such a strong flavour. Beautiful. This is the shrimp which has been cooked in soy sauce. The rice is next level. Mmm. I've got shiitake mushroom and seaweed boiled in soy sauce here. What a place to dine. This feels so traditional. It's a beautiful environment and the food's amazing. Mm. Mm. Subtle flavors. Perfect rice. The seaweed's the perfect texture. And then the, the filling is salty but not too much. That is delicious. So, this is a real cut above. As I said, we have these pretty much every day here. You get them from the convenience store. And if you've never been to Japan, convenience stores are everywhere. You can't turn for not seeing one. And you'll get these in all of those. This is just taking it up to such another level. Sitting in an environment like this. All the ingredients lined up, being made fresh for you. This is a very special meal. Wow. What 
a great lunch. That was so atmospheric. And like Thomas mentioned, that onigiri was like next level compared to what we've been having in the mornings. That only whet my appetite. We're now heading for a sweet treat just around the corner. We've come to this little shop which is famous for taiyaki, which is this fish-shaped cake which is filled with red bean. Let's go and order one. Oh, it smells so good. Let's take a little seat out the front here and tuck in. Check it out, how cute is this? The taiyaki is in the shape of a tai, which is a type of fish, a bream or a snapper. And in Japanese culture, a snapper is symbolic of good fortune and prosperity. It's basically a pancake batter which they pour into a mold and then they fill with filling. So you can get all sorts of fillings. There's custard, this one is traditional, so red bean or adzuki beans. And this place um, does them the traditional way. So they use an individual cast iron mold for each taiyaki. So cute, it's almost a shame to eat it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, the red bean, really flavoursome, quite sweet. And the, the batter itself is, is very thin. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Very generous with the filling. Look at that. Smooth a little with a little bit of texture, so it hasn't been mashed right down. You can find taiyaki everywhere. You'll find a load of stalls all around Asakusa. But this little shop is neat. It, it feels a bit more rustic. It's got a great flavour. And it's just a one small family run shop, so well worth eating this one. More sweet treats, my favorite matcha ice cream. So we've come to this shop. It's a collaboration between Nanaya, who are the gelato makers, and Suzuken, and they are the green tea growers. They've been growing green tea since 1848. So we're gonna head and grab some matcha gelato. What's great about this spot is that they have levels. So the matcha strength starts really mild and goes all the way up to like level seven. So I think we're gonna get a scoop of really mild, the scoop of the strongest. I'm going straight for the ultra strong. <laughs> it's really strong. It's quite bitter and earthy. All right, let's try the mild. Mm. Heat sweeter, just very subtle. But I love this strong one. It's really punchy. It's like hoo ha on your palate. Mm. There's a real difference in those two. Mm. I love them both, but I prefer the strong. You don't need as much of it to, for it to have an impact. It's really neat here. So they've been around, the green tea growers, since 1848. I think that's a common theme in this video. A lot of the, the shops that we're visiting have really long histories, and it's neat to be able to discover them in Tokyo. Mm. I'm going to dive right into this before it starts melting. This is all for me. Thomas isn't that keen on matcha, so it's my lucky day. Loving the rapid fire eating today. We're just banging out <laughs> the spots because there's so much good food in such a a small space. So we're not walking far between all of these. It's all very close together. There's heaps to look at. Mm. 
Next up, is a kaya. We're in Hoppy Street. So this is all little is a kaya, so little bars, little Japanese pubs. Pubs, uh, yeah, pubs. Sorry, pubs. Uh, little skewers. So, drinks, food. What better combo could there be? <laughs> The spot on the corner looks great because you've got a view of all the happenings and the coming and goings of people. So let's go and grab a table. It's all action, straight in, sitting right on the road. Going off here, there's a lot of people hanging around. We've ordered drinks, got some food on the go right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> We got given an English menu, so that was super helpful. We got a bunch of things, some charcoal grilled fish, some chicken thighs, some pickles, a, a stew, um, got some drinks on the go. It's a great atmosphere, you can people watch, it's really lively, it's fun. I love Izakaya. Our spread is starting to arrive and this is the fun of Izakaya. It's little dishes, you order lots of them. If you're still hungry, you just keep ordering more. Beers, highballs if you want them, and whiskey and um, soda. I'm on the beers. We've got some fish cakes here, we've got some deep fried pickle, we've got a little stew, we've got some other pickles, we've got some edamame. Oh. Mm. That is a delicious fish cake. Very light and with a tempura style batter on the outside. Oh great flavor and being dunked in the kupi mayo so the kupi mayo so the the japanese mayo makes everything taste good oh. Yum. this is the perfect unrushed izakaya experience for me this whole strip up there is all izakaya we're at the very end one but they're all going to be you know great this one has been brilliant because we're right on the corner we're watching the world go by the food is coming out nice and slowly though and that's what i'm loving about it i'm already on to my second beer about to order another one food's just coming in drips and drabs and it's about the atmosphere as much as it's about the food so you just order so many little tiny plates you keep ordering you have drinks and it's boisterous and you're just in amongst it and you feel alive. I really enjoy Izakaya. The Tokyo makes you feel alive. It's such a great city. We're gonna be filming a ton of videos. So this is number one of a ton of videos. Big focus on street food. We're gonna be showing some really neat places in Tokyo, some off the beaten path places. This one is sort of like on the beaten path, but off the beaten path. That's the type of videos we're going to be filming, just really showing you some great places to eat, some great food to have. Hit subscribe if you've enjoyed this one. Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. All the details of where we eat and ate are down below. Check it out. Thank you for watching. We can't wait to keep filming in Tokyo and we hope you enjoy all the videos we've got to come. <laughs>